everybody. I am in New York City. It's very rare that I get to come to New York City and it's actually not that cold, so I'm not freezing my buns off. But I am here for a few different reasons. So I am going to check out some brand new tech uh, from Alienware, ah! as well as just gallivant around New York City. So for those of you watching this who may have never been here before, I'm excited to show you the Big Apple. Let's do this. Here we go. I think I need to incorporate more old silicon as home decor into my house. Okay, so now for the part that I'm really excited about. All the new tech! So now I'm in the room where all the magic happens and I found my friend Ray! You don't have to squat. I'll, I'll move it, I'll move it, I'll move it up for you. I'll move it up for you. Uh, folks, you may remember Ray from previous Alienware videos. I don't want to cut off your head. I'm so short. <laughs> God, I'm so short. Ray, how have you been? I've been good. How have you been? I've it's been It's been good. two years, Trisha, since we've seen since each we've other. Since we've seen each other in it's person. Been so long. I know. I know. You have so much beautiful stuff here. I was like going through and getting hands on all of it just for like a quick room pan for everybody of all this really, really nice stuff. And uh, Ray is the There's man who can answer all of our questions. So let's let's jump into the new X14. Deal, Now I saw, I saw the claim on this is world's thinnest 14 inch gaming laptop, huh? That is accurate. We actually developed this in, in partnership with Intel. It's got all the new Intel components launching at CES. Nice. It's our thinnest 14 inch. It's super sweet. And if you actually look at it next to the 15 inch. Is it thinner? You can see just, it's just a couple of millimeters as far as the height goes. Mm -hmm. But even when you close the lids, you get the extra two. It's, it's a pretty substantial difference as far as the thinness goes. And then throw in the fact that it's a 14 instead of a 15, it's a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. um, it only uses dual fans, not quad fans, so it's actually a lot lighter as far as transporting goes. The battery life is longer. So for the gamer who's truly like who's truly portable, yeah. it's a great solution. Not gonna lie, I was a little worried when I heard 14 inch gaming laptop. I was like, oh, that's gonna feel way too small to game on. No. We but, took care of that. Yeah, I'm I'm very surprised. I thought a 14 inch was going to feel way too small. No, and if you look at the just, keyboard, the but keyboard, it looks pretty it, good. It, it's a normal size laptop keyboard. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to the to the X15 keyboard that we've already launched. I think I was reading something about uh, the hinge on this one. Now, is that different than the X15, X17 hinge? It is. It's a newly designed hinge, and okay. actually, we'll we'll talk about it because we have a we have a blown out version over there. Love it. And by blown out version, you mean version that's been completely taken apart completely so we can disassembled, yeah. mess with the guts? <laughs> Absolutely. So is this the X14 completely disassembled? What are we looking at here, This Ray? is the M17. So okay. one of the cool things, here's the cooling device for it. Lots of copper, two big ass fans, all the cooling, 97 watt hour battery. So you have plenty of battery life on the product. Super thin battery to make sure that we have, um, not to increase the size too much. Here's the, the rear bezel, so this is where all your I.O. goes. And then, you know, what every, uh, what every nerdy girl loves, the motherboard. <laughs> Yay! So here's all your, your RAM slots on the back side here. Because the M17, you can upgrade the RAM, right? Can, actually, yeah. We have yeah. user upgradable RAM. It's not soldered on. But here are the AMD CPU and GPUs that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see them in, in action here. And then here is the main part of the chassis. So let me make sure I don't, I'm still partially connected here. Just a keyboard kind of floating, trackpad kind of floating. But these are all the connections here on the back, all the guts. I love it. Now here's where things get interesting for the X14. Yeah, right? Okay. So here's the cooling. And it, mind you, I know we just came off the M17 and this looks just cute compared to. <laughs> um, 
But for a 14 inch notebook with the kind of horsepower it is, this is a lot of copper for such a small footprint. Now you saw the battery of the M series, check this out. This is an 80.5 watt hour. Look how, look how thick it is, like how tall it is, but it's way thinner. Way thinner. And, and this thing has to fit throughout the entire chassis of the motherboard. Okay, here we go again. Here's the motherboard. Look at that. Tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, with that kind of cooling and that kind of battery size, we're, we're able to get a lot of performance and we're gonna have great battery life coming out of this platform. The X series is really so unbelievably thin, the innovation in it is really cool. But here's the whole thing, when people pick it up, when people see it and they, they see the thinness, they, you kind of worry that being thin is gonna feel cheap or right. too light. But when you pick up any of the X series products, they, you pick them up and they're dense, they're solid. Yeah. You can feel the premium build quality that it goes into actually building these products. Yeah. You absolutely can, they feel good. Okay, so I briefly got hands on with the new, is this the AW720M? Is that what this is it called? Is the AW720M. It is our mm. new tri mode mouse. And actually, one of the things that I like about it is it, it's almost ambidextrous. So if you look at it, 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 it flexes both left and right evenly, and it's got buttons on both sides. And the tri mode is awesome because it's Bluetooth, it's wireless, and wired. But we have this cool little adapter here. If I can open it. So this connects with the, 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 the dongle for the wireless capabilities. Hey. But here's the cooler part. There's a little tip on this, uh, wrong side of the box. This part right here. Yeah. It's a magnetic charging tip. So you leave the cable plugged in and just have to pass the mouse by the tip and they join real quick and start your charging. Great. Yeah, I mean, as far as cleanliness goes, ease of use goes, and because the dongle's hanging out, your reception's better. Um, you don't have to worry about its interference as much as, as well. That's great. And I think I read on this one that a uh, full charge is 300 hours of battery it's, life. It's something ridiculous like that. Yeah. yeah. And I got a chance to try these on a little earlier, but I don't know much about them. Tell me about the new headset. So those are the new 920Hs. Mm -hmm. they, they keep a similar design to the headsets that I actually see you wear, the wired ones that we sent you. Yeah. But these are also a tri mode. So they do Bluetooth, cool. wireless, and wired. Now here's the cool part. But the microphone you can attach and detach. Mm -hmm. You can use them with Bluetooth on your phone. Right. You can use them for gaming. You can use them for all kinds of purposes. The part that just knocks me off my socks every time, they're Dolby Atmos as well. So if you have any of the notebooks, um, any of the new launching notebooks, yeah. we're offering Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos on all of them. Right. So it'll be enabled on your, on your headset as well. Cool, that is awesome. That is awesome. So yes, detachable mic, good to go, uh, adjustable. For different size heads, as someone with a tiny head, that's important to me. So for me, because of where the pressure points are, mm -hmm. tiny head, big head, <laughs> they don't actually put the pressure up here. If you see they're yeah. free floating and they actually put the pressure's in the back. So it actually feels a little bit more supported. You don't feel that. It does, you don't top. feel it right here, which is also very important if you're someone who wears glasses. Same. Except yeah. I use mine for reading. Okay. I'm not reading right now. No, I have to use mine for looking at screens. So gaming. Okay. Yeah. Gaming specifically for me. But yeah, these feel re very good. So anyone watching that's looking for headphones that specifically are uh, going to be comfortable if you also wear glasses, this could be it for you. Between yeah. gaming, video calls, everything else, my, my gaming station has become my workstation as well. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they're tri-mode and I can actually take my mic on and off, the comfort, um, I'm going to wind up wearing these things probably six hours a day for the next year, year and a half. And as far as the design, I feel like this is a little more of an audio inspired design. So it is, and, and we have the same 40 millimeter drivers. Mm -hmm. The cups are a good size. Um, they're still large like we had in the previous generation. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to follow a similar idea to that previous generation, but we also want to iterate on it and make it better, which is how we wound up with this design here mm -hmm. to take the pressure off the other ones. The wired ones, they work great. The pressure is a little bit different, but that band that comes over the top, um, it's, 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 it just sits different. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's uh, move on to something I've been looking at that I honestly have no idea what it is. Come over here okay, with me, with me, Ray. What? Hold on. What is this? So it says here, Concept, Concept Polaris. Polaris. And can I take a couple guesses? I mean, so I was like, okay, is it like, ladies. is it I like a mini it streaming PC? Is it an external GPU? Nailed it. It's an external GPU! It's an external GPU. Ah! So, you remember we had the graphics amplifier years ago. Yes, that I the, do. That had the PCI Express connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. We weren't ready to walk away from external GPU. There's okay. still there's still an audience for them. There's still potential for them. We want to make sure the world knows we're not ready to walk away from them. 
but the lifespan of the graphics amplifier, it had met its current course. So if you remember, the previous graphics amplifier only worked on Alienware systems that had that PCI Express connection. This concept is actually running right now via Thunderbolt. That's awesome. That's yeah. very, very cool. So I know right now it's just a concept. Is there anything you can even kind of like, <coughs> as far as maybe coming to production at some point in the future? I mean, what I can say is if you look at the design, Feel the materials. Mm -hmm. It's kind of refined. It's kind of solid. It looks. It looks damn good. Um, okay. Not talk about time frame just yet. <laughs> um, there's still some things that have to be worked out, but uh, we're, we're feeling confident in it. I like that. Yeah. Well, it looks really nice. Okay. Speaking of very, very high graphical performance, maybe in your laptop. I'm gonna back up over here because over here. We have the new M15 and M17, but the new M17. So this is the first all AMD joint innovation project that we've done with this amount of horsepower. Okay. Okay. So what that means is it has A plus A plus A uh, in partnership with, with AMD. Right. This will be the most powerful AMD Advantage notebook um, within the first half of the year. I mean, it's I, just mind blowing. And I, so for people that might not know, when you say A plus A plus A, when you say AMD Advantage, what it means what is does that mean? AMD CPU, Yep. plus AMD graphics, plus AMD software. And there's a lot of advantages there, not to play a pun on the AMD Advantage program, but what you're able to do is you're able to shift more power to the graphics when necessary and take it away from the CPU. Yep. And you can go the other direction when necessary as well. So if you're doing something where you're editing, for example, and you need more CPU horsepower, it can take that power away from the GPU and give it to you on the CPU. It cool. also has a smart box so it'll automatically, when connected to an external GPU, give you full graphic horsepower as you're pushing out of the system naturally. And to save battery, it'll move back to its integrated graphics, um, what, you know, when you're just doing light workloads. So that's the new M17, mm -hmm. uh, definitely made for power. What's new in the new M15? So the new M15 is actually getting a dual refresh. Yeah, later this year it'll also get AMD flavors, but sooner before later, it's actually gonna be refreshed with the latest Intel chips as well. Awesome, and I see we've got new Laptop bags here. There's, yeah, new sleeves. Yeah, um, if you need new sleeves. New the backpacks. Today. The new backpacks are cool. I was checking them out a little earlier. I like how they have different compartments depending on your different needs. Um, this one I feel like is the beast. It is the beast. And I've actually, with, with Kate going around the event, this thing's got space for everything, and I just referred to it as the deer hoof. Because yeah, because that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, I actually, it's got space for everything. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I actually thought it looked like, uh, I kind of thought it looked like a butt cheek sitting on a copyright machine, like a, a paper copy, copy paper machine. All right, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about here is I would love to ask you about the new monitor. I'm just gonna move this take the whole chair out of, out of the way. Tell me about the new Alienware 34 Curved and uh, the world's first quantum dot. So, so this is the new Alienware 34 QD OLED. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be launching or being announced at CES. It's the first quantum dot OLED gaming display on the market. Mm -hmm. it, it's a beast. The, the refresh rate is incredible. It's up to 175 hertz, yeah, right? Yeah, and yep. quantum dot OLED gives you such rich blacks for gaming and visual uh, experiences. So if anybody's familiar with OLED, you get the you get the truest blacks, the realest blacks. Yep. Um, and you and, and your you know the color depth is just so incredible. As far as immersive experiences go, and I'm, you know this with me, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of OLED. So to be able to bring a panel like this to our gaming monitors, yeah, um, just excites the crap out of me. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's the the world's first quantum dot OLED gaming monitor. That's 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 the a mouthful, official. right? That's the yeah. I wanted to make sure I got the official correct. But as someone that's a fan of curved displays as someone that's a fan of ultra wide and as someone that's a fan of quantum dot tech in my home theater setup dun, 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 now uh, we've got I, it i hear three check boxes yeah yeah now we've got it and of course yeah. you've got the alien effects lighting on the back you've got the newly designed uh stand with the cable management yep. built in hdmi display port yep. you know connections on connections on connections and a usb hub too right and a usb hub as well mm -hmm. yeah. okay there is one more concept that i wanted you to show me if you are free to do yeah. it. Okay, let's see. So this is a totally new, totally new concept, something I haven't seen before from Alienware. And uh, it's for the gamers 
who want the freedom to game your way, if you will. So what we're looking at is Concept Nix. Okay. Okay. Concept Nix is not meant to replace your average one-to-one -one gaming experience. So no, no. gamers that are gaming on a desktop or a notebook and they want the most hardcore experiences, this isn't for them. Yep. This is for the folks that want to have a multiplayer experience, that want to have a multi home exp a multiplayer in the home experience. Mm -hmm. So what it essentially is, is an in-home server for your gaming needs. You can have up to four players playing these titles um, within your home. And it, now that is just the basics of it. The, the, the real sweetness comes in when you start thinking about the use cases behind how these these players can game. So Chris, you're a mom. Let me just use you as the example. Okay, let's okay. do. Mm -hmm. You're at home, you're you're gaming on the couch, yep. right? But I'm, I'm a mom. Yeah, I'm AWS gaming on the couch. Look at this, by the way. That look familiar? Yes, anyone remember Concept yeah. UFO and these beautiful babies from the side of that? Just saying, just, I would still like to see that. Just saying, Ray can't talk about nope, that, right, Ray? Not confirming or denying anything. We can't confirm or deny anything, but just saying you've seen these before. Okay, I'm a mom. I'm okay. gaming on the couch. So, you're gaming on the couch. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, your husband comes home to Logan, right? Yep. What do you have to do? Mom stuff. Mom what stuff. Happens? So you can pause your game, <laughs> and you can pause your game, and you can either leave them to their, their mischief, yeah. and you can go to the room and play, or let's say that you, you want to go up back to Logan, yeah. you can then set up the tablet and take the game with you, as okay. long as you're still on the Wi-Fi network. Let's say you're playing a game on Logan. Right? Yeah. Oh, Paw Patrol on a roll, it's his jam. Okay, let's say he gets stuck, but you're, <laughs> but you're, in, but you're in your office making videos. He can say, Mom, I need your help. And he can send you the game to log in as him, you can get him past the point that he's stuck and send it right back to him in his room, on the TV, on his tablet or phone. No way. The experience That's cool. is, imagine, totally. imagine a server like this in your home with, with you, your husband, and Logan. Imagine it in, in, a, in a frat house. You know, like everybody's experience is going to be separate on how this happens. We could do split screen multiplayer. Cool. So like, but on the same display. On the same display. Right. So on the left, you could be doing Cyberpunk. On the right, you could <laughs> do, Logan could be doing Minecraft. And you could be gaming two different games on the couch together. You could be playing, playing two-player multiplayer games together. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. This thing is just, it's only a concept right now, but we've been playing with it and demoing it. And it's not about taking away the experience from, from the high-performance PC gamer. It's about bringing options to a wider audience of gamers. Sure. Like so, you said, this isn't for the one-to-one, -one, like I want the highest end gaming experience no. ever. It's not for that consumer. It's for a household with multiple gamers, multiple gaming preferences, wanting to be able to use it on any device. Like, it, is it correct to say? So in my mind, I'm like, cool. So it's like cloud gaming, except for the hardware is in your home. From that, yeah. I mean, we can't say that because there's definitions for cloud and, edge sure. and everything else, but Essentially, it's what it is. You're doing in-home streaming versus That's the idea. versus from the cloud itself. So, how bandwidth dependent is this? It's not. That's the best part. Okay. Because it's all coming from the data within your house. So, right. with a Wi-Fi six, you should have plenty of bandwidth for the for the machines in your house. Where you become bandwidth dependent is if you've got all four people downloading four brand new games sure. and the time it takes for that. But as far as when, when you're playing, I don't know, Call of Duty or Battlefield 2042 or Cyberpunk, the data going back and forth on those games is is, is minimal. Mm -hmm. So it's not extremely data dependent. And I would imagine because the hardware is in your home, like a lot of people when you're kind of thinking about cloud gaming and maybe some of the drawbacks of mm -hmm. that are thinking input latency. Um, but because the hardware is in your, in your it's home. It's minimal. I, I'm not feeling the lag. I'm not feeling the delays. I'm not feeling those experiences that I've felt with certain other streaming platforms in the past. Yep. You know, Trisha, we've been doing this for a long time. We've, <laughs> we've seen we've seen a few cloud companies come and go. We have. You know? And and this is and, and this is not meant to even compete with them. It's meant yeah, to it's bring a, different a whole different thing to the audience. You know, I think about families with three or four kids. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you buy them all gaming laptops? Right. It, it's it's tough. So I know you can't talk price point. This is a hundred percent just. I actually concept. have no idea. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. A lot of times with these prototypes, it's like it costs a billion yeah, dollars. Yeah, it's because there's like dollars. one of them in the yeah, world. Yeah. Um, by the time you get to mass production, that brings the cost down, yeah. honestly. But I mean, is the idea that 
rather than spending what a household would spend on multiple gaming laptops, this would be a more affordable solution? That's the goal. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not just that. It's, it's the goal to allow players to have the flexibility to game. As a mom, you get your kids into music. Right. They don't like music next month. Now it's acting. You know, three months later, it's softball. Dude, it's so true. I know. It, 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 I, we all did it. Our poor parents had to pay all, out of the nose for all kinds My of crazy lessons. My son has five lessons. guitars. Guess how much he touches those guitars now. Anyways. <laughs> but you're going to have, if you have a family of four kids, mm -hmm. and three are casual gamers, and one excels and decides that he's a hardcore PC gamer, now you, you're able to test the waters and get one gaming laptop. The one yeah, 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 yeah. Where the others are still getting the experience that they need to be satisfied. That's cool. I really mm. like this. I always like one of my favorite things about CES is going and seeing the concepts and the prototypes because even though some of these things may never come to fruition, some of them, if they do come to fruition, it's going to be 10 years from now. It's always cool seeing it in idea phase. And this is one step more than idea phase, right? This so is more than just idea it, phase. I mean, we're looking at it in action. I'm able to see it being demoed. Uh, you guys can probably see it a little bit on this screen mm. back here. Um, but it, it is, it's cool to see it in action. Now, what I will say, this is one of those innovation devices and, and within our team, this exact product may never come to market. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you is portions of the DNA of all of the innovation and design that we put into this product will come to market at some point in the future. Totally. So th that's, the, that's the great part about CES Concepts is that we get to throw things at the wall that are really out there and then over the next couple of years, take that DNA, mold it, see how the audience reacts to it and be able to bring products to, to life that are more that are better geared for, for the feedback that we received. That is super rad, right? Thank you so much Always for running me through this. Should we go get dinner and I'm like hungry. hang out? Yeah. And see New York! Korean Come barbecue. See New York! Schwartz because we're going to try to make it to the Nintendo store. Okay, I'm in the Nintendo store. This is like the first thing that I saw, by the way. You can't see it under my mask, but I can't stop smiling. There's so many friends here. I am out and about with friends from all over the country in the tech world, and it feels nice. because it's like 37 degrees. But we're all having a great time. Josh and Brittany, what's your favorite part about New York so far? Uh, let's see, meeting up with everyone. Yes, and, and, and food. <laughs> food has been good. Yeah. Yeah. 
and especially Trip. Oh, hugs! <laughs> hugs, guys. Christmas in New York is like the coolest. If you've never been to New York City around the holidays, definitely give it a go. But I mean, this has been an awesome trip. I uh, I got to see new sweet gaming tech, which you know I love. I got to see friends, and New York around the holidays is something special. So. Thank you for watching, and uh, I know by the time I release this video, it'll be after the holidays, but uh, seeing CES tech early is awesome. So, thanks for watching.